Oh yes, it's time for some X99. Stay tuned. The printer bought Simple Metal's full metal construction combined with a GT2 belt pulley system produces a 3D print that rivals that of most 3D printers costing thousands more. The 1.75mm Ubi's Hodden can print down to 100 micron resolution and calibrating the Simple Metal's build plate using the auto leveling probe couldn't be easier. Learn more about my favorite 3D printer and the winner of Make's 2015 Thin Wallet Award by visiting printerbot.com. Okay guys, we have the EVGA X99 for the win. So this is the middle tier X99 card. It supports up to three way SLI or crossfire. And it's perfect for what I'm gonna be using it for, which is my silent build. Probably gonna put a couple of 970s in there to start, hopefully upgrade that in time. But the 970s for me should be more than enough. Honestly guys, a lot of people are seeing this now with Adobe. You're really RAM and CPU bound. It's really not the video cards anymore. So take that for what it is, but it means that it's time for me to upgrade the CPU, the motherboard, and the RAM for my main system. So we're gonna check this out, do an overview, and then maybe take a look at it in the case. Okay, so let's go over the accessories because there are quite a few in here. We have the quick start guide, the manual, the the, DVD, which, you know, if you don't need the LAN driver, you know, I guess hang on to it for the LAN driver. But other than that, get all the the goods, the goods from EVGA.com. We have two SLI bridges. We have a three-way and a two-way. Of course, this does not support four-way, so no four-way bridge. Test points, so you can plug this into the motherboard, and we'll cover this in a little bit in a minute. But lots of easy test points for your multimeter. Eight SATA cables. We have your back I.O. shield, which is my one gripe with this board. Um, I would love to see padding on this thing. It's a premium price board in a premium price line. Everybody else seems to do it now. I would love to see some of that, the, uh, the shielding, the extra foam shielding on here like uh, Asus does. The super sexy cover for the back I.O. I do actually really like these, even though it's one more thing to put on. But pfft, big whoop. They look nice. And with a windowed case... Why wouldn't you want it? So and then of course we have the board itself, which very nice looking. Um, I wasn't super hot on the red accents on the board. I actually like the, um, the bigger brother of this a little better, the classified, because the only red is in the E. The one thing I still would like to see, um, you know, we'll talk about this now before we kind of go, we'll do an overview of the board in a minute, but the one thing I'd really still like to see is EVGA insists for some reason about putting the top by 16 slot all the way at the top. Now, that's great and all until you put a really big cooler on like the Be Quiet that I'm going to put on here, which isn't going to fit. That basically makes this top slot completely unusable. So it would be really nice if they... You know, at least put a buy one here or something like, you know, give give me something that I can use that slot uh, instead of leaving a blank. So I know why they do it. But at the same time, um, you either got to give me more room around the socket or, you know, something got, got to do something for me. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the board and we'll go over its features and then we'll get it installed and uh, maybe even get to the point of putting the cooler on there and seeing just how much it does conflict because now I have the X99 micro, the, the MATX version of this, and it does very much suffer from you lose a slot and on an MATX board, that's not good at all. So let's go ahead and go over the features here and then we'll get to that. Okay guys, so along the top, we have a couple of fan headers, your eight pin power, which is kind of right in the middle of the top of the board. I don't know how I feel about that, but it does reduce the distance that the power has to go to get to the socket. The CPU fan header, a CMOS switch, another four pin fan, your DDR4, there's of course eight bays, it is quad channel, your X99 socket, heatsink, 
And then down the side over here, we have a onboard power and onboard reset, which are, you know, if you're using this on a test bench or something, that's pretty nice. We also have where those test ports that I pointed out earlier plug into, your debug LED, and kind of the first question mark I have on this board. So this is a larger than ATX board. It's not quite EATX, but you can see from where you know the screw holes are here, there is definitely a little bit um, extra on this board. And to put a 90 degree um, header on for the 24 pin power, we'll see how that works. I'm a little concerned that with the, the fractal design case that I wanna use, that it may or may not actually work. We'll just have to see. It might just be hard to cable, but we'll we'll show that in a later build video. Okay, so across the bottom we have a three pin fan header, your front IO, USB 3.0 at 90 degrees. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess we'll have to see, depends on your case. USB 2.0 header, another three pin fan, a speaker, another three pin fan header, SP diff out, CFPA out and a 90 degree six pin supplemental power. So I'm also kind of curious about the location of that one. That's obviously uh, extra power to the PCIe lanes. We have your discrete, or I guess non-discrete, but your audio over here. So across the back you have your audio, two Intel uh, ethernet, and one gig, which are really nice. I'd really love to see 10 gig, but I guess, you know, that still doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this market. Underneath those, you have your USB 3.0, six USB 2.0, and your CMOS reset switch. So as you can see in the Define R5, we do have some clearance issues here. Now I think it'll work because I really do want to use this case, but something to keep in mind, that outside edge is not touching. It just does not touch right here. Uh, but getting these right angle connectors in is going to be a pain. So I will say I would love to see some of these right angle connectors, especially on an EATX board, because this actually is an EATX board, be, you know, vertical. Now, the other thing that I found while I was installing this is this heat sink is only held on by two tiny little tension screws. So what you get is big movement. Now it is secure right in the middle, but still for such a large heat sink, it'd be really nice to see that be more secure because I do tend to, um, you know, lift by the heat sinks because typically they're, they're secured extremely well. However, not so much in this case, unfortunately, you're just not going to be able to get, you're, you're never getting something in that first slot. So same as the X99 micro, unfortunately, you know, if they could move the X99 socket up higher, even, you know, by that much, you would be able to, to use a big cooler and the first slot. Okay guys, so that's the review of the X99 for the win from EVGA. Unfortunately, it does suffer from the same thing as the X99 Micro, which is clearance on the first PCIe slot. Now, as far as being an EATX board, you're gonna have to worry about, does it fit in the case that you want? I'm trying to shove it into a Define R9, which is not an EATX case, but there is just enough clearance there that I think it should fit okay. So make sure you check your case manual or whatever case you wanna use if you're gonna use an EATX board. Again, the clearance on the first PCIe slot if you want to use a big silent cooler, you know, if you're going to use a, a liquid cooler, this isn't going to be a problem for you. But if I'm trying to go an air cooled system here just to make it really, really quiet, I want to use, you know, a big CPU cooler. And unfortunately, you're going to sacrifice that first slot no matter what kind of card you want to put in there. This is Tim for Timmy Tech TV, guys. Check out shop.timmytechtv if you want to get a cool shirt like this one. I finally have some on hand. Of course, it says, Girls find me funny in my own mind because, yeah, you know, sometimes I tell jokes and my wife's like, ha ha, nah. So anyways, cool shirts like this. You can also get Timmy Tech TV logo shirts, the big airship. I really like that shirt as well. Cups, mugs, pints, all sorts of stuff. Shop.timmytechtv.com. 
Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there because you're going to want to see more of my content. Give me a thumbs up because I'm cool and girls find me funny. Until next time, this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. See ya.